Hey guys, Lucas here again. This is going to be a video on a Pango game that I played to hopefully help you guys with these uh, these micro kind of things that you can do in the lane to improve your laning situation. Uh, in this game, I'm playing uh, so I'm playing on my on my account with a very high MMR Rubik player. Again, I, I just duo queued with my friend Snaking, and we're playing against um, this is C9 Pile I Die, or I guess that's what team he used to play on, and then we're playing against a rank 40. Life Stealer, and this is a Europe game, so this, this rank 40 is, is like 9k, it's a very high MMR game, just to give you the context as to what we're getting into. So what I hope to do in this game is hopefully shine some light on what is the kind of good good tips to improve on your Pango offlane. I know I've released a lot of videos on trying to help you guys improve on the mid lane and these mid lane micro kind of small tips to improve your laning. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Um, Snaking commenting on Pylai Dai's items. You can see here he has four tangos, a lot of fairy fires, and a clarity. Can't say I've seen this build before, but it does seem pretty cool. Ten more damage. I, I don't really know how viable it is. He's probably just trying something out. But it it's it's interesting. It's interesting. Generally, I do fear the bane lane a lot. Let me let me just skip ahead through this pause. Whenever I see a bane, I'm I'm honestly very scared. Because it limits the areas that you can play on the map. So say there's a time where I want to I want to hard push bot. Let me just skip to this pause. Say there's a time I want to hard push bottom lane, uh, and they're showing a certain amount of heroes on the map. This is the same problem with Bloodseeker as well. All they need is like one hero to kill you basically. If Bane sets up with a nightmare into grip, you're gonna die. If Bloodseeker ruptures you and has like one like a clumsy net or some sort of bash or any way to cancel your TP, you're gonna die. Heroes like this are very difficult to play against, especially heroes that you don't have a grip cancel for, even if you meet against them in a team fight, which is typically like the best place to fight against these heroes. Uh, well, not the Bloodseeker, but the Bane. Uh, I remember I played one game where I was playing against a a Bane, and the only grip cancel on their team was my Rolling Thunder. And, well, we lost that game. That game was very hard to play. It's very hard to play Dota without stuns. Uh, anyways, let's get into the game. So the laning phase is going to start out like normal. We didn't really fight the rune because Bane is a pretty strong uh, rune fighter. I didn't really want to lose a lot of health there as well. So anyways, we start this lane. So immediately the Rubik is going to play on the side. He doesn't really want to duel this Bane, um, which is fine. He immediately, is, something interesting is that he's going to zap the wave. So one tip that I have when you're playing in very hard lanes is you should always push the lane. You should always just start right clicking the creeps as soon as they get there. Because if you push the lane and they're stronger heroes and they want to fight you, you have the advantage of your own creeps being able to also hit the enemy heroes. And I'm going to show you an example of that a little later on. So here, uh, we're just gonna, I'm just going to fight the Bane a bit. If I fight him here, I have my range creep attacking him, and the, the other range creep down here isn't really doing anything. So I have kind of an, an advantage I bit, a bit when I'm auto-attacking this Bane. Bane is also affected by Fade Bolt, where he was for a, a second ago. I don't know when that wore off. Uh, but the fight isn't that bad. So I'm sitting here, um, Bane is dueling us, but I'm also getting assistance from my Rubik player to auto-attack the Bane. So it's like a two-on-one situation, and I have creeps also auto-attacking the Bane. So while Bane is a strong hero, this does help offset kind of the, the, the ability that Bane has to do deal damage. Now here is something interesting that I imagine you guys wouldn't do. So I'm very used to aggroing the creeps onto my hero, so that they then get onto my range creep, and then I can deny the range creep. But something interesting that I learned from snaking this game, that I thought was, was too interesting not to share, are too interesting to not share, uh, is that watch what happens here. So, I tell Snaking, hey, we should get this range creep denied. And he says, no. Why would you do that? It's helping us win the lane. So what is happening right here is that there is a fight going on between two heroes, but we have more creeps, and we have this range creep. So when Snaking casts this Fade Bolt, or the Rubik player casts Fade Bolt onto both these heroes, and we start battling them, and we also have the, the range creep here, again, it does help offset the the loss that we would otherwise have encountered because it's it's a bane hero. Now I do realize this this tip these tips might not help like the most because I am playing in kind of this lane where I have the advantage of I'm playing with a first of all I'm playing with a really good player. Second of all he's playing one of the best pause four heroes you can possibly play in Dota, which is which is Rubik in terms of laning. Uh, definitely someone uh, I would definitely prefer Rubik to like a tiny Marana uh, Sanking. I don't even know what people play as pause for, but but this is very much preferred. Uh, anyways, when we do end up getting that, that range creep last hit, you can see they're still fighting us. And it's really just not going that well. He's, he's getting free right clicks off on them. And if they right click us back, they're going to aggro the creeps. And things just aren't going to go very well. So lane's going to continue on. Uh, he does end up salving up on Bane. Um, again, making sure that someone's going to secure this range creep is important. 
So oftentimes it is me because uh, Snaking is kind of using his, or the Rubik player is using his Fade Bolt kind of whenever to, um, whenever it's necessary in the lane, but he doesn't really need to blast at the range creep because I'm I'm fully capable of doing it with my Swashbuckle, and if I also hit the Life Stealer as I'm doing it, it's kind of a bonus. Uh, so I didn't really show my item earlier, but the first thing I buy with this build is a Quelling Blade. Uh, let me, before I talk about the build, let me just explain what's going on here. So he's just salved up, and now he's fighting He's fighting my Rubik player. This isn't something you can do uh, on, on Bane. So typically he would be playing like, like here or something, but he's fighting the Rubik, and you can see he has a range creep uh, advantage as well for the, for the, or sorry, he's fighting against a range creep and a Rubik. So the Rubik is getting his Fade Bolt off. Uh, I, I didn't make this video to just compliment my Rubik player, but he is playing very well in this lane. Um, so this fight's not going to work. As well, since I've been constantly pushing the lane with my, with my Q, and we've had Fade Bolt, and I'm auto-attacking creeps, uh, you can see here this fight is just not, it's just not a thing. Um, my Rubik, Rubik player then tells me, oh, we have, we have level 2 in a second, so I go to block, I keep right-clicking him with my Orb of Venom as well, and he does end up falling here, which is, which is very good for this lane. Uh, lane goes as normal, I'm gonna pull the creeps back to make sure I can try to deny these range creeps as much as possible. So he's got, he's got choices, basically. Now he has to either go for this range CS here, I'm trying to ping, but it's not really working. He can either go for this range CS, or he's gotta go for the deny. So he does a great play by right-clicking on my hero to pull the creeps out from under his tower, so we can go for these, these CS, but it's really not going to be a good trade for him overall. We, we do have, like, Rubik is a very strong hero. Uh, we try to deny creeps. Uh, it goes all right for us. So here I notice that, okay, well, I'm going to need to buy regen because uh, this is a hard lane. It's a bane lane. going to need to buy, finish my, st oh, I'm going to buy a stick originally. Make sure I have more tangos. Clarity's very good for after after some, some stuff happens. Uh, let me just go back really quick so I, I can figure out what was going on here. Okay, so Bane trades with us. We have a creep advantage. This is a good trade. Uh, I make sure I Q to get the last hit. And also, when the Rubik or when the Life Stealer doesn't move, it's nice. Anytime you can get a Q through uh, an opponent and a last hit at the same time, it's always value. I know when people say when you play SF mid, you should never really uh, raise people for fun. It should always be for kind of securing last hits. Generally, when you're kind of understanding the hero from from the from the initial go, and when you hit a hero with Swashbuckle and get a last hit, it, it's it's pretty good. Okay, so here Lane is trying to get pulled. Here I'm kind of stopping, I'm kind of fighting the Bane because I'm like, hey, I don't really want him to stop us from pulling the wave, but it doesn't really work. Uh, I do notice that I'm very low health. I probably should have been tangoing up. One thing I want to improve on in this lane is my tangoing. My tangoing was not very efficient. Uh, there was a lot of downtime where I didn't have a tango running, which led to my health being a lot lower than this. I kind of do a subpar queue, but it is enough to get the job done. Um, snaking tells me my courier is out of position. Uh, and I, I say shoot, <laughs> and then my courier dies, but some fighting happens overall, and then here I pop my clarity. So, uh, just just to know, like, something that I think separates lower MMR players from higher MMR players, it's not really that big of a difference, but it's also preparedness, and knowing what's going to happen in the lane, and being prepared for anything. So in this situation, I finished a kill, or, or a kill a kill occurred, and I kind of need to heal up fast, right? So I buy a salve for my health. But being able to pop this clarity immediately after the trade is something very valuable that some people might not have have done. Um, so securing the creep, um, just getting more last hits. This lane's going okay. I guess I could open up the last hits here if you guys want to see, but uh, it's not too big. Okay, so I salve up. Bane is kind of trading with with the Rubik. Things are going fine. Uh, let me just wait to see the next moment of something that happens in this game. So things are just are just chill. We're kind of just trading. Fade bolt happens. Lane is kind of even right now. So he tries to trade on Bane, which is not going to happen. We're just going to right-click him back. We get creeps on onto our range creep by aggroing them back. Things are good. This creep is probably going to get denied. Yep, we coordinate things correctly. Again, this is something you just do when you're when you're high MMR. You just kind of ping on the creep, and you're just like, we're going to auto-attack it together. It's really good for just securing securing CS. It's not always going to happen in, in in every game. Like, I can even find games where in my, uh, in my 8K MMR games, the 8K average games, high immortal... We're just not coordinating at all for for CS. It's it's kind of crazy. So here, uh, so here's one of the disadvantages. So what happens in this lane often? One thing I learned as well from from snaking, very very good off laner and great pause four player for for business associates in North America. Uh, the lane you want to keep the lane pushed as much as possible. Like if you can keep the lane here the entire game, it's it's actually pretty good because what happens is is if you if you let the lane push in. Then all of a sudden this bane is pulling, and if he pulls a double stack, then you're kind of not not okay with it. 
Whereas if you keep the lane pushed, then you can get this pull off here. And it, it's, it's very strong. So what happens here is we know that the Bane is pulling the wave. Otherwise, the Bane would be in this lane. So we see a chance to pull the lane. Um, I don't know how this fort happens, but this Lifestealer is like, whoa, I don't want this lane to be pulled. This is not okay with us. So he walks up. He kind of tries to get the CS here, but you can see he kind of just stepped out too far. And then you can just see the power of the Orb of Venom. So one thing that I do on, uh, when I buy Oov is I've been buying... So there's a lot of starts you can do to Pango. I kind of... Not sure if I discuss this because I might be recording this for like the second or third time because I make mistakes when I record things and I kind of want to do this all in one take. But one thing you can do when you start Oov is you can start Oov one set of so three three tangos or I guess one set of tangos and then a bunch of branches. But in this game, I started two sets of tangos and I ferried myself the the quelling blade. But ferrying yourself the quelling blade is something kind of new to to Dota or just starting a quelling blade and then bringing yourself an Oov. Like oftentimes in my pubs, especially when I've been playing Europe recently, is people will tell me. Who's going to buy the Oov? Are you going to buy the Oov? Like, they'll ask me. They'll say, okay, if you're not going to buy it, I'm going to buy it. Because of how impactful Oov is when you're playing against melee heroes. Again, I don't know if I said this already, because it could have been my third time recording this or something. But but anyways, that's 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 the scoop on that. Uh, so again, going to buy more clarities. Kind of wish I had a salve here, but things are okay. Uh, lane gets pulled. Well, it's, it's going to slightly get pulled. I end up trying to fight this... Uh, this lifesteal here, I thought my Rubik had Fade Bolt up. Apparently, I don't really know the, the cooldown on Fade Bolt, but I know that Bane is pulling. I thought the the Rubik stepped, or not the Rubik, the lifesteal stepped out too far, so I did decide to go on him. Things aren't going that bad, though. Uh, like, I'm okay with that death, because even if I lived, to be honest, I would have wanted to die, because I would have had zero health, zero mana, I would have had to walk all the way back to base, and it's really just not that efficient. So here, I'm going to buy a Power Treads as soon as possible. I kind of just buy the Gloves of Haste, and I have Boots now. Uh, you can just see the duels that I take in this lane. So as soon as I walk back to the lane, I see the lane, I greet the lane here, and I see this, this guy's walking out too far on Lifestealer. Like, I'm a pango, we're even in lane so far. I don't mind right-clicking him to duel him. Uh, I do get a lucky disarm, uh, kind of forcing a rage is the goal here, but it hasn't really happened. I don't mind fighting him here. It, you'd have to be a little bit careful on, on how, how you fight. Uh, in this case, I kind of just play a little bit safer. I kind of let my... My Rubik tank a lot of the damage. I do get slept. Things are good. I get the call out from the Rubik player that we can get this kill if if he does stay too long and wait for my swashbuckle to be up. And then my swashbuckle comes up, and it's a kill. Uh, and you can see how slow this player is. With the Oov lucky shot, he's just going to die as well. Just kind of some cool stuff that, that happens in this lane. Now, something important that a lot of you guys might ask is how does this happen? How do these players put themselves in these situations where they mess up? Like, a lot of times you'll watch these clips and you'll be like, wow, that Lifesteal and that Bane player are bad. But but really, it's just a lot of small things in this lane that lead them into making that play that they don't know will screw them over. Like, I, I could easily show you guys this game. Uh, I could show you the replay and you'd be like, wow, those guys, those guys aren't very good or something like that. But then I show you guys the ranks and you're like, oh, wow, that's pretty crazy that this double kill is happening in, the, in this high MR game in the bot lane. But really, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. So here, the life Lifestyle thinks he can duel me, and he can't. Uh, he's got, a, like, look at all these creeps that are auto-attacking him. Like, when you make these trades as a carry player, there's a lot of times where you can run into the offlaner, especially Pangolier. And you can make these trades where you feel like the Pango has to run away. Because, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a life stealer. I have a Bane support. I'm way stronger than this Pangolier. But in this game, first of all, I have a Rubik support. Second of all, I have a lot of creeps that are also dealing damage to this lifestyle. Look at all these creeps. As soon as he right-clicks my hero, uh, I can't really highlight things, but look, you can see this range creep. You can see all these melee creeps. Even the catapult is on this guy's ass. This guy's not having fun. There are a lot of carry heroes that you can get away with this play. Uh, well, well you, you can, like, you're okay to do this, but there are some supports, or there are some carry heroes, like lifestyle. I don't think lifestyle is very good right now, my personal opinion. Like, I, I've, been, I've been screwed over by an Ursa who just tanks creeps, all the time and I just die to him and it's, it's kind of annoying to die to someone who who I think is making a mistake but his hero is way too strong so we can compensate for it but anyways just a trade happens I think this lifestealer might be a bit a bit tilted from what happened earlier in this lane because now he's just playing here and he has no health as soon as I get my swashbuckle up again that cute the lift didn't even matter much from Rubik like as soon as I get my swashbuckle up they're just gonna die and they're gonna feed um, Lane is going fine. I'm just going to kind of keep the lane here, kind of last hit, deny creeps as much as possible. It's not much of a concern to me. 
I get told by, by Rubik, I kind of should have done this on my own, but I don't even know if I would have done it. When you're playing against these heroes like uh, Bane, um, Luna, you need to buy these raindrops. Otherwise, you're just going to end up buying way too much regen in lane to heal up through all the magic bursts that they that they have in, in the lane. And it's just way better to just buy raindrops. So I buy raindrops. This guy kind of goes on me. Again, asserting dominance. This is something that a lot of carry players like to do. Uh, you can see I'm trying to punish him as much as possible. I do get that small pull off. Some stuff's happening middle. Just going to farm here. I kind of have to wait for my support to come back to the lane before I'm able to actually do anything. As you can see here, he just walks up and bullies me. Now, I do have power treads, though. So he has phase boots and a wraith band. I'm kind of sitting here with power treads. I've got I've got Oove and magic wand. These traits aren't that bad for me. They're kind of bad, as you can see. That's why I run away. But I do I do get a few auto attacks off because I'm not gonna let him get away scot free. If he wants to run at me like this and he wants to trade auto attacks, I can trade auto attacks. Uh, here, some stuff happens where he kind of messes up. I do get a proc, a lot of lucky procs in this lane. Uh, and then here he pops the rage because he doesn't want to get rolled into, and he's he's just outnumbered here. I, I don't remember if he dies or not. Okay, he does die for that. Uh, that's just what happens when, when you can duel the enemy hero and you also have support coming in hot. So I'm not sure exactly where the Bane was. I, it looks like Bane is middle from what I can see on my mini-map. Uh, I do get ganked here, which is really bad. I did hear that afterwards that I... So you can see the raindrop is active. If I switch to strength treads, or pop my magic wand and then strength treads, I might have lived here. I don't think it was that close, but uh, we'll just we'll just let we'll just let that happen. And I can go to base and heal up. It's really not that bad. Uh, one thing to note as well in this game, it was kind of interesting, so I kind of messed up. We have a uh, we have a razor pause five, so the morale in my team isn't really that great. I kind of picked Pango in the in the second phase and messed up a bit but anyways let, let's get back into the game so i tp back bane's not really here in this lane bane doesn't really do much in this lane at this point because a lot of bad things have happened to like not really in their favor so i'm kind of stronger me and rubik are a stronger duo than the bane bane is kind of trying to hit level six and then when he comes bottom we're going to be in a little bit of a pickle here but okay so here i fight the life sword this is actually an interesting position that a lot of you guys might not know so this little uh area right here on the map let me go slow so i can ping this area right here is actually just like a one unit area. So if you, oftentimes what I'll do is I will swashbuckle in front of this area or I will stand in front of it to make sure that a player cannot get through it. So what happens is Life Sealer tries to get through this area. Um, I walk up, I stand here, immediately he cannot walk through me. So he has to path all the way around and here's where you can get some extra auto attacks off. I probably could have cut this tree and auto attacked a bit more. This isn't really a big thing, but just these micro things are, are cool for you guys to know. And if I didn't walk there, I could have also swashbuckled into that position. Here, my Q, not too accurate, but it's not really that bad. I think Rubik is telling me that maybe we can dive the, uh, the life stealer, but I don't, I don't actually know what he's saying. I think he's actually just like, I'm going to port top. He's not actually interested. So I just stay bottom. Um, I do kind of look at what's going on, but it's really not that great for my game if I port in. Uh, I'm not sure if I do or not. But I kind of just want to make sure that my game is going well. I see a lot of stuff is happening. My teammates are dying. It's not going so well. But a lot of things that I like to do, even when I play offlane, for Pango specifically, is I like to prioritize my own game. Especially in certain games where I see the drafts and I see what needs to be done. If I feel like I can have a strong impact on this game, if I can hit certain item timings, then I will play for myself a lot. Now, this isn't really the best when you're playing offlane. And a lot of heroes uh, that you would traditionally play offlane would kind of have the mindset of, oh, I should probably help my team more than, than kind of play for myself. But I think that staying in this lane to farm was kind of just the right decision. I also kind of looked at the fight and I was like, okay, well, if I pour it in, are, is something really going to happen? Okay, so here I go on the life stealer, noticing that my teammate is porting in. Make sure he pops the rage, kind of just auto attack him into the lucky shot procs. And he's just going to end up dying here. Like, I, I have support, he's popped his rage already. Um, something that you would not have noticed is that I actually killed this, this small camp here. So the Life Steal's goal probably was to run into the small camp here in order to get an infest off, but I'd actually killed the small camp before this happened. Life Steal buys back, and I'm a bit happier with how this game is going. Uh, because I was getting uh, a lot of, I was hearing a lot of complaints from my team. Again, I will pause five Razor. This this Batrider has 1300, almost has a Blink Dagger, has bots almost Blink Dagger at 11 minutes. Let me show the net worth real quick. So this game... This game's not going that bad, but this Batrider is is turning into a real problem here. 
Okay, so anyways, back into the game. So we do get that kill. CK ports bottom. So I pop clarities. Again, look at my inventory. Uh, I'm constantly just making sure that I have clarities active. I'm going to try to transition into my Vlads. Very good Vlads game against the uh, the Weaver, the uh, Void Spirit, and the Lifestealer. As well as I have I have a Morphling and a CK. Two heroes that very much benefit from the Lifesteal. And the Vlads will give me a lot of armor too against the enemy heroes. Make me a little bit more tanky. Okay, so I kind of leave the lane, maybe looking for a kill that was going to happen mid lane, but I end up coming up bottom again, because I'm like, okay, well, I need to get this tower. Some stuff happens. I end up buying a lot more of my Vlads, get the clarity going. Uh, I don't know why I was farming this agent camp. I probably should have ran mid in retrospect. There's no real reason why I should do this. Um, CK was pushing bottom, though, so I wasn't really sure what my play was, to be completely honest with you guys. Um, some stuff happens here. <laughs> I end up rolling. Um, I did think I wanted to port out, but my CK ended up being close enough that, that things were okay. I did think that hitting this tower was going to be something I wanted to do, but actually it's just something we can't do. The Sparrowrider has, has pooped all over mid lane, and there's there's no way that, that we can we can fight someone like him. Here he almost catches me, but I run away, and, and things just aren't going that well. But nonetheless, we do have heroes that are farming. The gold differential isn't that bad. You can see I'm doing way better than this Lifestealer, and things are going okay. So, I guess some fights are happening mid lane. I don't remember exactly how much I'm... Well, I don't know exactly how much I even remember from when I played this game. Here I am doing commentary. I could have done it a video uh, where I kind of split stuff up over time. But I thought that... Let me just do kind of a one-off uh, rant kind of format about this, this game. And hopefully, there will be a lot of small things I can point out as I, as I re-see them, almost. Um, but, anyways, yeah. So, a lot of stuff happening in this game. I just end up farming. So, talking a bit about item timings right now. So, I kind of want to get my Vlads. Uh, my team is kind of just farming. We're kind of playing slow and reactionary. We kind of know that this Lifestealer isn't really going to buy. He's not like an Ursa or like an AM. He's not going to buy this Battle Fury and solo carry the game. We don't have to make these aggressive smoke plays to win the game. We kind of just have to deal with this Batrider. Who's got way too insanely high of a net worth. And he's just running at our team. So I'm kind of trying to help out. I want to try to make space for my, my CK and my Morphling to farm. I make this play here. I ask if there's teammates. There's not. So I kind of just say whatever. I'm kind of just running around the map looking for things that I can do. You can see here I'm constantly moving my mini-map. I'm constantly sorry, I'm moving my camera, looking at my mini-map, looking for places that I can, I can help out. Because in this kind of game where... I, I don't know if it's the kind of game where I lost offlane necessarily, but it's a kind of game where even though I did well in the offlane, there's not really a location on the map I can pressure. I can only really click around on the map, see what's going on, try to help my cores. My Morphling, who's who's constantly feeding, <laughs> I need to try to figure out how, how I can help the team. So, um, just last hitting a lot, making sure I'm keeping up my farm. Uh, not really much, much to do. Alright, so we'll see here. I, again, I made a little bit of a mistake, tried to push a bit too far top lane, and uh, some banter between former... C9 members. <laughs> uh, a bit of farming. Not too much going on here. Uh, you're going to see some plays being made a little bit later on when there, there are plays that can be made, when these enemy players step out of position a bit longer, but you're kind of just going to watch a lot of chain feeding from, from our side right now. But we are farming a lot of our jungle, which is something important. So in these games where you're losing, or you're against these strong heroes, if you can keep the map in a state where where you actually control this area and they control this area, you're honestly getting like the same amount of farm. And in these games where, um, let me just skip a bit further ahead so this this stuff will be removed from the map. In these games where you can control uh, like this, for example, obviously you're better off, right? Because then they're, they're stuck for this small area and they don't really have much they can do in the game in terms of farming. Like they can't farm as much as your heroes. Uh, okay, so here I end up pushing bottom lane. This was bad. Uh, I ended up getting a talking to from from snaking after this after this play because it's he was, he was telling me why the hell do you think you can hit that tower? You're setting off some sort of gong, and the enemies are gonna run in and they're gonna completely destroy you. And so I agreed with him and I said, okay, you're right. That was a bad play. <laughs> there's there's a bat rider with bots and blink dagger who's got like insanely high net worth and he's gonna run around and try to try to mess me up. And there isn't really much I can do. Okay, so here. I spawn, I'm looking at my map, I, I see that there is a fight going on here. I kind of just say, okay, well why the hell not should I go fight here? My Morphling is kind of just getting gone on. 
Void Spirit blew out of his spells. Uh, maybe this can go well. I do also have Rubik here for the lift. You can see my rolls are pretty fairly concise. I kind of mess up here. I feel like I should have got that hit off. But overall, we say this is a bad fight. But then we realize we actually just have more heroes here. Um, I don't know where the, where the CK is. The CK is not porting in. But this does just seem to be a good fight. They don't have their Bane. Uh, we kind of get some solid rolls off. I don't know why I'm looking bottom. I'm trying to see what's going on with our <laughs> with our CK. But uh, they mess up and we take advantage of it. A lot of the things is just being in the right place at the right time when you play Pangolier. And you can really take advantage of this in a sense that you can you can farm a lot on this hero with your swashbuckle because you have mobility skills to help you get to fights faster. So when I say you have to make sure that you're capable of getting to these fights, um, you can kind of, again, you can kind of leave if they're not good, but just your ability to farm on the map, push out waves, and then you can also get to fights pretty quickly. So that's, that's kind of heavily abusable on this hero as well. So say you're making a mistake and you're not always in the right position. You can, you can honestly get away with it on Pango because you get to relocation so fast. And you're also a pretty fragile hero so that you being late to fights and isn't really that bad because you, you can always still roll and have a massive impact on the fight. Okay, so this game's kind of evening out here with that fight that happened top lane. Uh, I'm buying a Diffusal Blade. Um, pretty good item against their team. I was kind of thinking maybe I need like a Blink or maybe I need something else, but Diffusal's like one of the better items to carry the game. Here's something interesting that happened actually. So we kind of didn't see the enemy. Let me let me show you my player perspective here. So here we're fighting bottom. We see kind of there's not really anyone in this top area of the map. We see there's no one here. So immediately Snaking calls out they're they're smoked to try to kill uh, Morpho, which is is some insane insane thing that I I don't know how he was able to to diagnose this. This must have been from just looking at the map and and years of experience. But our Morpho ends up dying. Uh, we do pour it in, and we try to save him. Our CK is actually way stronger than I thought he was. Um, so this fight this fight begins. Originally, it's just like, let's just kill Bane. But we can see here that after the Bane kill, the uh, Void Spirit player finds himself out of position. So we do end up taking this fight a bit longer. Uh, very, very good matchup um, having the Rubik against the Weaver as well. Something I, I basically have to say because it, it made a lot of this game a lot easier. Where just having this hero that can... Uh, move around so quickly on the map with a lift and then able to steal spells and, and deal deal burst damage it, it's kind of crazy like the rubik versus weaver matchup is something that i always hate playing against if i'm playing the weaver if i play it off lane because i don't really play weaver carry but it's something i'm not a fan of okay so we're gonna buy um we're gonna buy our items make sure we're always clarying up so if, you, if you've been watching uh, of course you've been watching this game I, I have i always have clarities in my inventory um gonna clear waves Almost get gone on there, but things are okay. Kind of just playing with my team right now. You can see here that my my pink player is farming here, my morphling player is farming here, and I'm kind of putting pressure on them bottom. I'm very capable of escaping whenever I want. Also, keeping an eye on the mini map, so I can see how many heroes they have. Like I see, I have a. I don't really know if I see this life so This is a camera bug, but I see there's a life stealer here. Pretty sure that's a bug, but I do have vision here, so I kind of know what I'm getting myself into when I'm harassing them here. Uh, smoke goes off. We're kind of running around. Again, this is going to be a lot more high octane than your typical North American pub videos that I will probably be uploading more more frequently. But, like, in terms of there's a shit ton of smokes happening. There's team plays running around the map. Uh, here's something interesting where Snake King says if he grabs this rune, or if he jumps for this rune, I have him pre-lifted. Uh, which means that um, he had vision of him here, and he's going to basically telekinesis as soon as he gets in range. So you can cast... You can cast your telekinesis on the hero, and as soon as he gets in range, it'll just cast it. Um, he does end up messing up, though, where he just ends up dying. Uh, here, um, I kind of made this weird turn from a Pang perspective. Not very good. The Weaver ends up getting away. But as you can see, uh, things are going well. There's a lot of internal comms that are going very poorly. Uh, ultimately, a lot of it's caused by the fact we had a Razor Pause 5, and our Morphling player isn't exactly favored by some of the Russian players on our team. But things are going well. Uh, gonna proceed a bit further. This game, I kind of just wanted to do a replay analysis just on the just on the laning phase because I thought there was there's so many small intricacies in this lane that you might not notice from like everything from where the Rubik is standing um, to where I'm standing to where the Bane's standing. Like positioning, everything about positioning matters. These these trades that you make in lane are not easy, even at the highest level. There are players that make these mistakes as to when they can fight. 
um, so so one example would be I start right clicking an enemy hero, he right clicks me back, and then I have to think, okay, well, can he do this? Is he winning this battle? Do I have to run away? Is he allowed to right click me back? You know, stuff like that. All, all these small things uh, come into mind. Um, so here again, this is just a gank. Um, I guess I guess a nice roll by me. You can see how I'm constantly clicking to make sure I readjust my roll. Didn't really have to roll that much. I could have finished off with a Q, but a kill's a kill, right? Okay, so we have to watch out for this uh, Batrider blinking in, but at this point, the game is kind of just way too advantageous for us. We just have better cores. The Void Spirit doesn't really have a raid game, to be honest. He has to deal with trying to burst down a uh, a somewhat tanky... Sorry, this is this hero. A somewhat tanky Razor, um, as well as a CK. And then if our Morphling doesn't mess up, then we're, we're pretty favored. Also, this Rubik, uh, after he bought back earlier, there was this kill that happened down here where he bought back. He kind of just has a Reaver in his inventory, not too sure what he's doing. But I think he's a little bit tilted at what's been occurring in this game. Um, which is good, because my team, I honestly thought that we were going to lose this game a, a long time ago, based on how the lanes went. Okay, so getting Roshan. Again, Pango, an insane Roshan taker. Lucky shot, disarming Roshan for five seconds, as well as having the Vlads. It's just insanely good. Some fight happens here. I think I find myself out of position. I don't know if I deserve to live there, but uh, I get my roll off. I don't remember if I ended up getting lassoed. I request that Bane Grip get cancelled here. Um, it does get cancelled. God bless. I do end up still dying, which is kind of unfortunate, but the fight goes well. Alright. So. Anyways, trap of this game, it's just going to be a bunch of good plays being made by the Rubik player. Uh, being able to scooch around the map, um, good plays being made by CK as well. Also, this, this lifestyle is, is very much tilted. He's, he's kind of just given up on the game. He does still have decent net worth, but... Uh, the Morphling versus Lifestyle matchup is also favorable as well for, for my hero. Okay, so I kind of ended up going for the Basher here. I could have ended up choosing, um, I guess, what I would recommend is maybe... So, I don't really recommend eggs when you play offline Pango, but Basher is something I would I would highly recommend. Going the Power Treads, Vlads, Diffusal into Basher build. I like it a lot uh, in most games. Maybe some games you might want to splash in a Halberd or a Blink Dagger, depending on what heroes you're playing against. But um, Blink, the Basher is really good against the Life Slur as well for when he tries to go a little out of position and then TP away. It's just not going to happen. Uh, here we go on the... The Void Spirit is just going to die. Uh, this game's kind of just wrapping up at this point. But uh, yeah, I don't remember if there's anything else I wanted to say about this game. Just that uh, I hope you guys learned something about these small intricacies that are, that are in the lane. I'm not sure if I covered them too well. I know in my mid mechanics video I talked a little bit about how there are certain times when you can right click an enemy hero and unfortunately a lot of it is just experience. Uh, I've been playing a lot of chess recently and I'm sure there's there's a lot of rela relations that I can make to that. I doubt I'm going to do a good job right now but I'm going to try. So there's a lot of different positions you can find yourself in and knowing how to react in all those positions is something you can really only get by experience or a lot of studying. Uh, so like in this lane there were a lot of, of small uh, locations where I auto attack the enemy hero and you see a trade that is favorable for you and this whole game is about making favorable trades and after you make a favorable trade faring yourself the regen so that you can continue to make these favorable trades uh, that's something I find the most important about the offlane it's also preparedness one thing that I find terrible about my offlane is that I don't know how to react to these games where I play Batrider I've been trying to get into Batrider recently I suck at it a lot but I think a lot of it is understanding what items you need to have on the hero and how these items are going to help you in what situation. So like on Batrider, for example, you start with you start with three mangoes, a bunch of regen, and then like knowing when to cut waves, when to buy your bottle, when to ferry yourself more regen is something very hard to, to understand when you play this hero. Same with Axe almost. When you're playing in these games where you have to cut waves as Axe, you have to know when to fare yourself more region. What you what, you, what items should you start in the lane so that you can start cutting the lane at, at three minutes in? Or what items do you need to have in your inventory so that if the enemy support harasses you, you can actually just salve up and continue to cut the wave. Because the worst thing that can happen to you is you're in the middle of cutting waves and then the enemy goes on you and then you have no region and you're like, oh my god, I have to go to base. The wave ends up running down the lane again, you lose it, you lose the next wave too. All of a sudden you're like three levels behind and you don't really know what's going on. Uh, so in this lane, you can see that I, I really abuse the, the trading. 
um, the clarity usage as well from buying regen. It, all small things that are very important when you play when you play off lane. So, anyways, I guess that's gonna wrap up this video. Uh, 35 minutes long. I hope you guys learned something about this game. I was gonna upload a highlight reel of this game, but I thought it would just be more valuable if I kind of just went over it, went over the as many small things as I could find. However easy it was for me to explain, because it is very hard to explain this kind of stuff. Like it's it's like if you're a tennis player trying to explain how you hit the ball. Like, okay, that was a bad analogy, but you kind of just. It's it's like uh, it's like muscle memory. Like for me, it's muscle memory on Pangolier. So to try to explain it sometimes can be rough. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me uh, put out further in terms of educational wise. I'll try to get some more gameplay stuff out to you guys later on in the future. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed and have a great day.